Hi everyone, welcome to day 16 of Adventure Code 2023. Um, I'm going to be explaining the puzzles and my solutions as usual in this video with a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. If you want to check out my solutions, my code, they're going to be linked to in the description. There's a GitHub repository where I store my solutions to all of the days of Advent of Code, so be sure to check that out. Today we're in a laser maze and we need to figure out uh, a bunch of stuff about how a laser travels through mirrors and splitters. But first, let's see a time lapse of me solving the puzzles. Today we're taking the laser beam that we got from last time and we're redirecting it through this square grid. The laser beam will travel in different directions based on what it hits. So we have empty space, we have mirrors, and we have splitters in this square grid. The laser is going to enter from the top left and is going to head towards the right. If it hits empty space, it's just going to keep traveling in the original directions. That's represented by a dot in this grid. If it hits a mirror, which is either a forward slash or a backward slash, it's going to get redirected in a new direction based on the angle of the mirror. So if it, for example, travels uh, from the left, enters from the left into a forward slash mirror, it's going to leave up top. Um, and if it hits the, a backslash mirror through the right, um, then it's also going to leave up top. So the direction is pretty intuitive. All the rules are explained down here. If it hits a splitter, so we have, for example, say, a vertical bar. Um, if the laser beam is traveling vertically, so up or down, this vertical bar does nothing to it. It just passes through as if it were empty space. However, if there's a laser beam that is coming in through the left or the right, then it's going to split into two beams, which are vertical. So if it comes in through the left and hits this splitter, then it's going to generate two new beams uh, that go from the top and the bottom. Nothing is going to come out the right and nothing is going to come out the left. So that's what splitters do. Horizontal, uh, horizontal splitters do the same thing. If there's a vertical beam that hits a horizontal splitter, it's going to come out the left and the right, two new beams. Uh, otherwise, if it's horizontal, nothing happens. If it's from the bottom, same idea. So again, the beam comes in from the top left square and is traveling to the right. We need to bounce this beam around and split it a bunch of times and see how many tiles in the end are hit by the laser. So not all of them are going to be hit. It's going to bounce around a few times and cover some tiles. We need to count how many tiles get energized by the laser beam. So uh, this is a map of which tiles get energized. And we just need to turn the answer of how many tiles um, that is. So here is my solution. The bulk of it is in this recursive function, which takes in a row and a column, which specifies one tile in the grid, as well as a direction. So this is going to say, okay, we have a laser beam at uh, row I and column J. It's heading in direction D, and D is going to be an integer since there's only four directions. The direction is going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3, and this is the key I have generated up here. So right is 0, up is 1, left is 2, and down is 3. So uh, we have the specification for what direction the current laser is heading in, and depending on what the current tile is we're going to generate new lasers that call this function again so for instance if we hit a vertical splitter from the left then d is going to be zero and when we return we're going to generate two new beams um, which are like one row above and one row one row below uh, heading in the one and three directions which are top and bottom respectively so this is a recursive function basically we just do a couple of things with it. Uh, first, we need to check if this laser beam has been considered before. So we keep track of which beams have already been like called through this function. It's basically just a way of caching to make sure we don't run into an infinite loop or don't do anything inefficient. Um, but yeah, if it's already been considered, then we don't need to consider this beam anymore. And we're going to keep track of this beam if we haven't seen it before inside this giant four by M by N array, uh, which basically just tells us for every single tile if it's been visited by a beam in that direction. Also, we need to make sure that the tile is actually within the grid. This is just to catch any edge cases that come up in case we try to uh, focus a laser beam in an area that is not inside the grid. A number of things can happen based on what the current tile is, and we're going to keep track of the output directions of the lasers um, based on what that tile is. So if it's an empty tile and the output direction is only going to be the same as the input direction because it travels right through. If it is a splitter, so if it's a horizontal or a vertical splitter, then we need to do a little bit more casework. So if it's a horizontal or a vertical splitter, it's going to get caught by this condition. We're going to check for an exclusive or here. Um, if exactly one of these conditions is fulfilled, the first condition is the beam being vertical, and the second condition is the uh, splitter being horizontal. If exactly one of those is fulfilled, then it's going to travel right through, because that means either the beam is going to be vertical and this uh, is satisfied, but this is not satisfied, meaning the 
uh, beam is also vertical, then we're going to have some issues here because the beam and the splitter are not going to interact. In the other case, this is not satisfied, meaning it's horizontal, and this is satisfied, meaning it's also horizontal. Um, so in that case, the output direction is also going to be the same as the input direction. It's as if the splitter didn't exist. So that's what this exclusive or condition is checking. Is the direction of the beam the same as the direction of the splitter? If that's the case, output direction is going to be the same as if it were empty space. In the other case, it's going to get split. So we're going to do some fancy modulo arithmetic here. We're going to take the current direction. So for example, if we have two, then the output directions are going to be one and three. And we can find that out by adding one and adding three to the current direction, because that's going to offset the direction by the appropriate amount to transfer in the other direction. So if we have any horizontal beam, either zero or two, then the output direction is going to be one and three. And that's what this uh, little condition or statement is checking. If it's going to be vertical, so 1 or 3, then the output is going to be 0 and 2. And that's exactly what a splitter does. It just changes the direction of the beam to be the 2 in the orthogonal directions. Now finally we have mirrors, which are actually pretty nice because for a single mirror, the output direction is uniquely determined by the input direction. So that's what this is doing right here. We're going to, for example, check if it's a forward slash mirror. If it's a forward slash mirror, then we have a number of directions that the output beam is going to go in depending on the input beam. If it's a zero, so if it's moving to the right, then when it hits the mirror, it's going to go up. So I'm actually pointing in the opposite direction. Sorry, it's, my camera is mirrored. But if we have a forward mirror, zero is going to become one. One is going to become zero because it's moving up, then it's going to travel to the right afterwards. Um, if it's a two, then it's going to get turned into a three because if it's, if it's traveling to the right, then it's going to move down after hitting this mirror and so on and so forth. So this is just converting the input direction to the output direction using a simple list. Same idea for a backwards slash or backslash. Um, zero turns into three, one turns into two, two turns into one, three turns into zero. And we're going to do that um, just checking what the current direction turns into and putting it inside the output dir's list. Next, we're going to iterate through all of the output directions and figure out the new locations that the beam is going to go into. So for every single output direction, we're going to compute the new row and the new column using this handy dandy list over here, which tells us the directions basically of every single direction. So like the column and row differentials for every um, direction. For example, if the direction is zero, then the location differential is going to be zero and one, meaning we move zero in the row direction and one in the column direction. So one direction, uh, one step right. Similarly, uh, for one, two, and three, this is just representing change in row and column. And that's how we figure out where the output beams are going to go based on their direction. And after that, we call this recursion recursively. We call this function recursively again, um, basically putting a new laser beam in the new location and with the new direction as well. Finally, we just call this enter function for the top left square, which is zero, zero, and it's heading rightwards, which is the zero direction. And basically it's just gonna bounce around a bunch and keep track of where it's been. Again, we have that functionality because first of all, to get the answer and also to make sure we don't uh, go over the same square twice in the same direction with the laser beam, cause that's just redundant. After that, this uh, ins array is going to be filled in for every single row, sorry, for every single tile in the grid, it's going to know whether a laser beam has passed through in the given direction. By the way, if a laser beam passes through the same tile in two different directions, um, that doesn't matter. They're just not going to interact. We're going to iterate through that ins array and figure out for every single square if there's been a laser through it by using the any function, because for every single tile, it's going to have a list of four booleans telling us whether a laser has passed through in each of the directions. So if any of those have been satisfied, then yes, the tile is energized, and we're going to add one to our count of energized tiles. At the end, we just print that out, and that's going to be our answer. For part two, we need to figure out a optimal location to start the laser in such that the number of energized tiles is maximized. So in part one, we're starting the laser in the top left square and moving to the right. In part two, we're allowed to put it in any location we want, um, starting on the edge. So we can start from the top edge and move down or start from the left edge and move right or start from the right edge and move left or bottom to top. So we can choose any single tile on the edge and uh, in the appropriate direction, launch the laser from there, see how many tiles are going to get energized and then pick the maximum answer. So this is pretty simple. It's not um, too much of a difference from part one. Basically, we keep the exact same code. I wrote a new function called <coughs> energy, which takes in a input 
uh, tile as well as a direction and just computes how many tiles get energized. So this is just what we're doing in part one, except wrapped up in a function. We do need to be careful here to make sure that the ins array is reset every time. Otherwise, we're going to end up overwriting uh, our array, which is not good. So for every single trial, we're going to start with a new fresh ins array, then compute how many tiles get energized and just turn the answer. So that's this function over here. Then we're going to go through every single one of the edges. We're going to go through the top edge and the bottom edge and the left edge and the right edge, launch lasers from every single point on that edge in the right direction, figure out how many squares are going to get energized if we launch the laser from there, and then take the max of all of those. So that's going to be our answer best, and that's pretty much it for part two. So thanks for watching day 16 of Advent of Code 2023. I hope you got something from this video. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave that in the comments down below and be sure to check out all the other days of Advent of Code as well. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.